but also institutional alignment. People people make fun of Colorado State because they're just they're like the Auburn of the Mountain West. They're trying everything from top to bottom, administration, boosters, everything. They are trying to be good at football. It's just not working. What is up, everybody? It is Jake back with Master Football. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to be up to date on all things college football, hit that red subscribe button. You will not be disappointed. Also, hit the like button too, and follow me on Twitter slash X. If you like EA College football content, go subscribe to my other channel, the MF Film Room. Link is in the description. But enough about all that college football content. Let's go. So in case you didn't know, I'm in a new digs right here. It's been a while since I posted. Obviously, I've been and a little bit of a move here. So we're, we're kind of figuring that out. Okay, I just got a little, got, my, got my, my thing up here. Like, listen, we're under construction right now. So we're doing this because we have to, because some gigantic news came out that we absolutely have to discuss. It, of course, involves my Boise State Broncos. It involves the West Coast and potentially even the South and the center of the country in terms of the G5 programs. This affects everybody, basically everybody under the Big 12 down, and that is the Pac-12 surviving from the grave. So from Ross Dellinger, one of the first to report it, the Pac-12 is rebuilding the conference, adding Boise State, San Diego State, Fresno State, and Colorado State. Now, what I'm not going to do is just reiterate that for 10 minutes and speculate. What I want to do, though, more importantly, is talk about what this means going forward, because this is the first of many actions for multiple different reasons. What I want to go through is kind of like what's going on, why it happened, why certain things didn't happen, and where this is going. Let's get into that right now. Okay, so let's go over a couple things here. First of all, what happened. So the Pac-12 has added four programs from the Mount West. We already know those four right there. They will join the conference on July 1, 2026. This is important here. One of the following has played in every Mount West championship game since its inception, BSU, Fresno State, and San Diego State. So they added the top of the Mountain West in almost every foreseeable, you know, uh, aspect. Let's make sure here, People say, oh, I know why this happened. Why it did not happen. Not say why it didn't happen, but reasons that are not why this happened. First one here, the Pac-12 wants to be an automatic bid in the CFP. Let's just make sure we're clear. The way that the current conference CFP rules are written, there's no automatic bids for a conference. If you win your conference, there's no automatic bid. So those don't exist in writing for any conference. The SEC, there's nothing that says the SEC conference championship winner automatically gets in that doesn't happen now indirectly that is because whoever the sec champion is is going to be one of the top five highest rated teams but it doesn't say sec champ automatically in that doesn't exist anywhere so there's no the automatic bid if you keep on saying that take that throw it out you don't know what you're talking about next up here is uh, pac-12 wants to be a power four conference okay let's make sure we're clear about something autonomy status known as power status allows you to create some keyword some Custom rules around your conference, which a non-power conference can adopt. What that basically means is that, you know, Alabama was looking at the NCAA and was like, why are we operating on the same rules as Kent State when our athletic department is five times, 10 times, 15 times bigger than theirs? And the NCAA was like, okay, you can do certain rules. You can compensate your players in certain ways. You can give them certain gifts, blah, 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 blah. However, the NCAA said, hey, Mac, if you're ever in a situation where you want to adopt these rules, you can. They made the rule. You can adopt it. Now, you and I both know that uh, the MAC and Alabama are not on the same, you know, uh, athletic department budget levels, so they're not going to be able to do that. But if they could, they had the, if they had the ability to, they could. So the narrative that, that they're going to try and, like, file for something and get that, they I mean, maybe, but it's not really why they did this move. Like I said, there could also be some additional revenue if considered to, closer to the Big 12 or ACC and the CFP payouts versus the G5 payout. But that still has to be negotiated, and it will be negotiated because, again, these negotiations happen kind of routinely here. So that's not a, a reason, but it's not not a reason. I'm not really considering that. But the first two there, those are those aren't those are not real. Why it did happen is more important. More importantly, it happened because it has to happen, or at least it should happen. The NCAA has given the Pac-12 a two-year grace period to get to eight teams minimum. It needs to be met by July 1, 2026. Washington State, Oregon State had power status taken away from them and they need to get as close back to that as possible the next part here is the most important part of it too the liberty question sorry bronco blamer power to breakaway 
and the G5 playoff. Basically here, we keep on hearing this like the difference between this two. We have autonomy versus not. We have, you know, uh, well, let's see a G5 playoff. Let's get a power two breakaway. Let's separate the, the, the chasm between the top and the bottom of college football is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And Washington State and Oregon State kind of see themselves falling farther and farther and farther behind. What they need to do, whether or not they're going to be able to catch the Big Ten, they're not. They're not going to be able to catch the Big Ten. They're not going to be able to catch the Big 12. They're not going to be able to catch the ACC if, unless those team uh, leagues lose teams they come back down. That's not going to happen. But what they can do is they can be either the best of the G5 leagues or the worst of the autonomy leagues, so to say. That's their best bet at this point. And how they do that? They take, do the same thing, the same playbook that the Big Ten did when they took from the Pac-12, when the SEC did, and they took from the Big 12. You look down, you pick the best teams, you bring them up. That's exactly what they're doing. They did that from the Mountain West. I expect them to do that more in the East and in the South. All right, the deciding factors for these choices. So a lot of people are like, okay, well, Boise State makes some sense. SDSU, they've been named a lot. Fresno State's interesting. Colorado State, what's going on there? Let's go through these here. Most importantly, obviously, is the football success Program prestige. Boise State has been doing very well. Fresno State's always had a solid record. You know, San Diego State's had some up and downs, but they're really, really doing, uh, you know, good under Rocky Long, especially as of late. And they've got some historical players. They've got, you know, Marshall Falk. They've got Donald Pumphrey. They've got players that you would know there. However, the most important here from Colorado State's perspective is the second and the bottom. Second geography. I mean, Denver is really easy to get into. It flies direct to everywhere in the Mountain West and in uh, the new Mountain West, or in the new Pac-12, excuse me, with uh, with uh, Spokane and Portland for Washington State and Oregon State, but also institutional alignment. People people make fun of Colorado State because they're just, they're like the Auburn of the Mountain West. They're trying everything from top to bottom, administration, boosters, everything. They are trying to be good at football. It's just not working. So for them... <laughs> For them, they're trying, though. Unfortunately, if you look at them, they literally took their coach, Jay Norvell, from Nevada in conference, took him up to salary by two and a half times. That's, I mean, that's not unheard of, but that shows you that there's the haves and the have-nots, the want-tos, and the not really cares in the Mountain West. Colorado State cares. Nevada, mm. So that's the reason why they were brought over. All right, very interesting here. Why would they only add four? So the rules state you need to get to eight, and you only got to six? So think about this. The current cost and value of the remaining Mount West teams was not worth avoiding looking elsewhere for now. I know that's kind of a weird quagmire of way of saying it, but what I'm basically saying though is the fact that right now they can still add UNLV, but they're like, well, remember here, UNLV, the way that the, the agreement for the Mount West, the scheduling agreement between the Mount West and the Pac-2 worked was that there was every time you added a team, it added more money to the buyout for that team. So what it basically means is the first team you add was X amount, and then there was a little, uh, X plus a little bit more, X plus a little bit more on top of that, and then a more and more and more and more and more. So the crazy thing about that is now where you're at is UNLV is going to cost more to add than Boise State would based on the way the agreement was written. So that, that basically meant is you can't take all these members. The more members you take, the more and more we get as a percentage. So unfortunately, that means that there's kind of a negative for picking a Mount West team. So why not look elsewhere? That's probably what they're doing. Part of the sales pitch to those teams who are elsewhere uh, would be the inclusion and more importantly, the exclusion of certain Mount West teams. If you're at the top of the American and you're like, okay, well, we lost Houston, we lost Cincinnati, and we lost you know, uh, UCF, and we gained Charlotte, and we gained UABs, all right, and we gained FAU. And it's like, okay, what are, are we just going to get watered down more and more and more and more? Well, in the same way that the Mountain West is like, okay, let's take the top, go to the Pac-12, we have six there. Now, they were like, okay, do you guys want to join us, or do you want to stay with your lower level division teams? What do you want to do there? It's more enticing to do that. Also, there's nothing stopping the Pac-12 from taking additional Mount West teams in the future, and they still may. We kind of have an SMU Big 12 situation. Wherefore, the way that the Big 12 did was the Big 12 needed to survive. They had those eight teams that were still there. The way that they survived is they added Cincinnati, BYU, Houston, and UCF. Their next four was USF, SMU, Boise State, and Memphis. Ultimately, though, Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah became available, and they took those. They waited, they waited. They always kind of had those in their back pocket, but then they picked those because they were kind of patient here. Same thing with UNLV and the rest of 
the Mountain West teams that didn't get added, they can always kind of still be added. The Big 12's not coming for New Mexico. I know I'm shocking when I say that. No offense, New Mexico. But that's kind of the situation here. So if they look east and they look south and they don't get what they want, they can always come back to those Mountain West teams later on. All right, now where did they look to next? This is an interesting one here. So the Pac-12 commissioner, Teresa Gold, by the way, I didn't even know she existed for the longest time. She said that there is a lot of interest in schools joining the new Pac-12 that they're talking about, the, the, the six-pac, so to say. There's been some rumors, though, that the Cal and Stanford have, are returning to the Pac-12. There's some issues with that one here. The reason why they're in the ACC is because they did not want to be associated with whatever new version of the Pac-12 it was, whether or not it was Boise State or Fresno State or you know Utah State or whatever it is there. So with that, they would join the ACC. They would rather travel 3,000 miles for away games than be associated with a school that's lower than them, blah, 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 whatever it is. So they are gone. They're out. There was some rumors out there that's not going to happen. SMU is an interesting case. It's really, really low chance, like maybe 1%. You never know. Because they are paying money right now to be in the ACC. They have, they basically are being, they're not getting paid a conference payout. They're having their boosters supplement their, the, uh, you know, the conference payout to them to make sure that they can just pay to be in the dance. They want to be in the ACC. Also because the Big 12 was jerking them around and the jerk, they picked a bunch of, I mean, like the Big 12 didn't really need Dallas and SMU's like, dude, we're doing everything we can. And they're like, yeah, we'll talk to you. We'll talk to you. And then eventually like, fine, we're going to go do this ourselves. And then they jumped to the ACC, but they're still paying $30 million that they have to provide from their boosters. They're going to go from that to potentially making money. So it would be like 30, negative $30 million to plus $10 million or something like that to join the Pac-12. I mean, that's like $40 million over five years is 200 million bucks. That's not insignificant, but I don't think they want to be disassociated from the ACC. I think they like where they're at. Again, very, very low chance. Top three rumored teams to be uh, would be Memphis, Tulane, and UTSA. There's also been some other rumors as Rice, Texas State, USF, and others. So one thing that is really, really cool is this map here. So what? check this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just slowly kind of pontificate on what they can do based on geography. Again, this is just geography. We're going to factor in some things here, though. But the cool thing about it is we're actually going to give you a visual map of what this is going to kind of look like as the conference goes forward. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to get rid of the Big Ten. No Big Ten team is joining the uh, Pac-12. It's just not going to happen. All right, next up, the SEC, same situation. No SEC team is going to join the Pac-12. They're going to get removed too. Unfortunately, no, no Big 12 team, none of the four corner schools, they're not coming back. They are removed as well. There is an argument for the ACC still being in there. I mean, maybe you talk about, you know, uh, maybe, you know, SMU or maybe uh, Cal Stanford. No, those are all out as well. They're not going to go down. They are out as well. Another one that doesn't really make sense here is the MAC. The MAC is just, it's kind of its own entity there. It's really ge geographically isolated. I don't think it makes a lot of sense. They're going to be out as well. All right, Notre Dame is not going to come in. And I think UConn was spurned by the Big 12. I think UMass is also out. So UConn, uh, UMass, and Notre Dame all out as well. All right, Conference USA is interesting, but you got to remember here, Conference USA already got pillaged by the Sun Belt and by the American. So I can't imagine that the the Pac-12 would jump over the American and jump over the Sun Belt to go out into Conference USA. So they're all out, except for Liberty. So this is what you're left with. Now, you look at this map right here. We've got a nice little, you know, evergreen section here. We've got Washington State, Oregon State, Boise State. You've got your Fresno State, San Diego State, and then you've got your Colorado State. I think that the next move is going to be, the reason why they added those four was because they're going to try and go east. Now, how far east do they go? We're going to see. I personally think the next move right here, again, the, the rumors that they've had so far is they're going to add Memphis or try to add Memphis, Tulane, and UT San Antonio. Now, that gives you three. So if you look at this right here, the way this map works, there's a northwest quad or trident right here, three. You've got your you know, California and, and Denver. Now, Denver flies really easy to both these places. So that's going to be pretty easy. So it's got three right here, three right here, and then three right here. You want to get to nine because you just don't really know what's going to happen after that. Now, beyond that, though, you look at these other teams here. What do you want to do? Do you want to emphasize maybe going with some service academies? You've got Navy right here. You've got Army. If you do those, you might want to add a couple other schools in there. Maybe add an Air Force. What are you going to try and do there? I personally have my perspective here. What I think they're going to do is this. 
All right, so the future edition plans. So prior to July 1, 2026, I think they're going to add central time zone teams. They're going to try and add Memphis, Tulane, and UT San Antonio. I don't think that the ACC situation is going to take care of itself. I think that Memphis, Tulane, and UTSA, UTSA especially Memphis fans, are going to be like, listen, the Big 12 already turned down uh, Washington State and Oregon State. There's no guarantee they're going to come for us. The ACC is not calling unless they lose too many teams. What are we doing here? Let's go over here with them. Same with Tulane and same with UTSA. ACC chaos does not dissolve the league. Again, if that does, all bets are off. Everything's up in the air. Let's say that doesn't happen. They wanted to get to certain numbers, 12, 14, or 60. What would they do and what would I do? What they would do, I think they would add USF and they would add two of these three teams, Texas State, Rice, or North Texas. They would try to add for that Texas emphasis. Me personally, remember here, if the goal is to make sure you separate yourselves from the other G5 leagues as the best G5 league, you add the best teams. The best teams, USF, obviously was former Big East team. You add App State and you add Liberty. You got your little North Carolina corridor. You got three teams on the East Coast, three teams in Central, two teams in Mountain, and four teams on the West Coast. You can have games all day long, the 12, 3.30, 7, and the 10.30 Eastern Standard Time slots. That would be the best, in my opinion. I think, though, the next things that the ADs would do, though, is they would look at the last of those Texas schools, maybe add UNLV in that instance. I would add Texas State and UNLV as well, because after that, if you add, you know, USF, App State, Liberty, so that's three, that's 12, two more, that's 14, that's Texas State, that's UNLV. I think that then the uh, the ADs would look at, like, maybe UAB or Georgia State, Birmingham and Atlanta. Me, personally, I would add two more. I would add Gonzaga and Wichita State. And what you would do in that instance is you'd have your east coast of, or your east section of eight teams and your west section of eight teams. What that would mean is that all of your Olympic sports will be played in between the east and the Olympic sports will be played in between the west with occasional crossover, but that would save a lot of costs for those teams. But then football, because football is chartered flights, you just send those back and forth. That's not that big of a deal anyway. That's what I would do. And then you add Gonzaga, add Wichita State, emphasis on the basketball, Again, San Diego State, Memphis, Gonzaga, Wichita State in basketball. That's not a bad league to look at there. It has been forever since I recorded a video. It, you can tell me, first of all, I had to take this two times. I actually didn't even have the screen share on. This is all over the place. There's not even the lights up. I've just, everything's going on. But again, what do you think about all of that? I personally think right now they're going to try and get to nine. The reason why they didn't end UNLV is because Technically, the cost to add UNLV is going to be more than the cost it is to add San Diego State, which is kind of crazy, but that's the way the agreement works. So they're going to look out east. They're going to try and get three to protect them and give them, you know, some regional travel partners or things like that to lower costs for those, you know, Olympic sports before they kind of figure out what they want to do with the ACC, what happens with the Big 12 and so on. All right, guys, get in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about all that situation. And remember, hit the red subscribe button too, please. If you like EA College Football content, go subscribe to my other channel as well. But that's it, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I am out.